you may be worrying about how the cost of living keeps going up despite supposedly zero inflation. Cost of living? Have you looked at the cost of dying recently? Isn't it strange how we only ever seem to get the whole family brought together when there's a wedding or a funeral? Everyone promises to keep in touch and then life gets in the way and we don't see them once in between Grandad's wake and Auntie Prue's cremation. Speak to a couple planning their nuptials and they'll tell you all about the cost of venues, catering, limousine hire and all the rest. But the taboo subject that no one talks about is the rising cost of funerals. I've become a bit of an expert on this recently since we launched our London burial plots investment. The total cost of a funeral is now north of £8,000 and rising at 7% a year, three times the rate of inflation. Burials are more expensive than cremations because you now pay thousands of pounds for the plot, especially in the London suburbs where the shortage is somewhere between acute and critical. Just the cost of the funeral director and the minister to officiate has gone up almost 100% in the last decade. 20% of families are now unable to meet the costs of a funeral and are seeking state help. The Department of Work and Pensions offers a funeral payments programme, but you have to pay everything first and then hope your application is successful. In the last full year for which data is available, there were 69,000 claims, of which just 38,000 were paid. And the average payout was £1,217, against a typical cost of over three grand. The last resort is a pauper's burial, now with the politically correct name of a public health funeral. We might all need pauper's burial soon by the time George Osborne is finished with us, his latest wheeze is to massively hike the fees charged for granting probate on a deceased person's estate. It currently costs £155 if you do it yourself and £215 if you use a solicitor. So what would be a, a reasonable increase in fees given our near zero inflation rate? How about 9,300%? Yes, under the latest plans, if your estate is worth £2 million, your family will be left with a bill for 20,000 quid just to get grant of probate. Even a modest estate of three to 500,000 will attract a 500% hike to a thousand pounds fee. Above that, it jumps to 4,000 and then if your estate's worth over a million, Osbo trousers eight grand. Above that, if you've managed to accumulate 1.6 million, you'll be honoured that your heirs will get to make a mandatory donation of £12,000 to the Treasury coffers. Imagine if your aunt lived all her life in a modest terraced house in Chiswick. It's now worth two million exactly, and the only other thing she had was a, a current account with £3,000 in it. You now have to find 20,000 in cash just to pay the probate fees. You could be forced to sell the house or take on loans just to pay these massively inflated charges. Once again, the message is loud and clear. You either need to be stonkingly well off so that none of this causes you any sleepless nights, or you need to burn through the lot so you can rely on the state to sort out the mess you leave behind. The worst thing you can be is a little bit wealthy. I think they used to call it middle class. You feel a strange squeezing sensation, like when you turn that lemon until the pips pop out. It's a feeling that will only become more familiar as our creative government finds ever more ways to turn our assets into funding for their commitments. If you fail to plan and provide for the final investment of your life, be very careful out there. We've had the war on drugs. We've had the war on terror. According to Tim Price, we're now at the beginning of the war on cash.